All right, and welcome back. In today's video, we are going to be going over section 1.3, which is all about segments, rays, and distance. By the end of this video, we should be able to use symbols for lines, segments, rays, and distances. We're also going to be able to find distances and use a segment addition postulate. So with this in mind, please have out your guide and notes. Let's begin. In learning a new language, the first things you need to learn are vocabulary and rules of grammar. In geometry, you need vocabulary, symbols, and rules that are called postulates. So we have what's called a segment. A segment is named by giving its endpoints. Point X and point Z are the endpoints of segment XZ. Segment XZ and segment ZX are the same segment. Point Y is between point X and point Z. So point Y must be on line X, Z. So notice the differentiation between how we write segments and how we write lines. When we're writing a segment, we have to have a line segment above the two endpoints. When we're writing a line, we have to have a line above two points that are on the line. When we're specifically talking about segments, we name it using the endpoints. Technically, we could have written for the second diagram, line X, Y. We could have wrote line Y, Z because those are lines that go on and on, and those are two points that are on the line. When we talk about segments, we need to use their endpoints. We also have what is called a ray. A ray is named by giving its endpoint and another point on the ray. The endpoint of a ray is always named first. So ray XY and ray XZ, those are the same rays. It's the same endpoint of X, and Y and Z are two points that go on the way our ray is facing. So from X to Y and from X to Z, it's going to continue to go on and on to the right-hand side since point X is on the left. Points X, or ray XZ, and ray ZX are different rays. But YX, ray YX, pardon me, and ray YZ are what we call opposite rays. And the reason they're called opposite rays is because they're starting with the same endpoint and going in the opposite direction. So if we're looking at point Y, point X is to the left of it, and point Z is to the right of point Y. So those are going in opposite directions. Awesome. With this in mind, please work on problems 1 through 12 on the guide and notes and resume when you're ready to move forward. So we also have something that is called length. So the XZ is the length of segment XZ, or the distance between point X and point Z. You can find the length of a segment on the number line by computing the absolute value of the difference of the coordinates of the endpoints. Length must be a positive number. So if we're trying to find uh, the length of XZ and the length of YX, we would subtract the two values, the two endpoints, and take the absolute value of it. So we get that the length of XZ is 3. And we get the length of YX is 5. And remember, it's always going to be positive. So we're talking about length here if we do not have a symbol above it. So notice how we have XZ when there's no segment, there's no line, there's no ray above those two letters. That means we are talking about the length of the segment. We're not talking about a line. We're specifically finding the length of segment XZ and the length of segment YX. In geometry, a rule again is called a postulate. And these sometimes can be called axioms. This is when you're going to want to take out your postulate packet and highlight the ones that we use throughout the year. It is going to be your responsibility to keep track of ones that we have used. That way you are going to be sharp and ready to use them if we have a proof or if we're using any type of statement or we have used postulates or theorems and definitions to help us in any geometric situation. So we have what's called the segment addition postulate. If point B is between points A and C, then AB plus BC is equal to AC. The length of segment AB plus the length of segment BC will give us the total length of segment AC. And if we're looking at it through an example, point R is between points S and T with the length of segment RT equaling the value of X. 
We also know the length of SR is going to be equal to X plus 4, and the length of segment ST is going to be 14. We want to first find the value of X and then find the length of segment RT and SR. So we have a diagram that is given to us for now. And the way that we want to go about it is we always have to start with the segment addition postulate. We do not have a segment subtraction postulate because we can't really subtract away a distance. We have to always add our two smaller segments to be equal to the larger segment that those two make up. We always, always, always have to use addition. Even if when we start to use the algebra, we're going to have to be subtracting, that's fine with the algebraic setup. But we always have to have a geometric setup in the very beginning to allow us to use an algebraic setup. And this is what I mean. So we're always going to start with SR plus RT is equal to ST because that's the segment addition postulate. Now from here, we're going to input our algebraic representations. We know that segment SR is X plus 4. We know that segment RT has a length of X. And we know that total of segment ST is 14. So we can substitute in the algebraic values and we can solve and we find that X is going to be equal to 5, which means that segment RT is 5, since we were given the length of RT is X. But now we have to go back and find SR, so we have to plug in 5 for X, and we do 5 plus 4, which gives us 9. We also have a statement that is called congruency, or to be congruent means that we're going to have two objects that have the same size and the same shape. Those are congruent. It's an equal sign with a little squiggle on top of it. So for example, congruent segments have the same exact length. So if the length of AB is equal to the length of CD, then segment AB is congruent to segment CD. Please be aware of the differences here. It's subtle, but it is important. When we have an equal sign, we're, that we are talking about the value, the length, the measure. But when we talk about congruency, we have to be talking about the actual shape. So we have the length of AB is equal to the length of CD but we have segment AB is congruent to segment CD. That's very, very important to understand the, the differences there. We also have the midpoint of a segment. A midpoint divides a segment into two congruent segments. So if point X is the midpoint of segment AB, that means that segment AX is congruent to segment XB, or the length of AX is equal to the length of XB because they both have a value of 4. And just like when we have a midpoint, we also have the bisector of a segment. A segment bisector is a line, a segment, a ray, or a plane that intersects a segment at its midpoint. So the length of AX is equal to the length of XB. So plane M, line RS, and segment VW are all bisectors of segment AB. They all go through the midpoint of that segment AB. It could be a line, a segment, a ray, or a plane, so long as it goes through and contains the midpoint of that segment. Awesome job with this today, kiddos. Please work on problems 13 through 18 on the guided notes. You're doing a really good job. Keep making yourself proud. Let me know if you have any questions, and I'll talk to you soon.